Skiing and snowboarding are supposed to be fun, except there are many elements to these sports that can easily take the fun out of it. The most common complaints that I hear on the slopes are, I'm so cold, or oh my gosh, I'm sweating, and why do we have to wear this big jacket, it's so uncomfortable. Well, if you've ever said anything too close to this, then this is the video for you. I'm here to help you, and I'll be teaching you the art of layering and how it can solve almost all your problems. So bring out your notepads and pay attention closely. To provide the most information I can while still keeping your attention in this small amount of time, I'll be listing all the different layers starting from the closest to your skin to the outermost layer, explaining what they are made out of, and what they do or why you should wear them. Also, I'll list some good examples or brands to look into. Finally, I'll list some of my favorite combinations of all the layers depending on the weather and activity you're doing. Links to all the clothing I talk about will be posted in the description box below. So, the layers can be broken into three easy sections. We have the base layer, downer insulation layer, and the waterproof outermost shell layer. Now let's go ahead and talk about each one. Base layers will be flexible, tightly fit shirts, quarter zips, long underwear, and sport specific socks. These layers are usually made out of merino wool or synthetic fabrics. Cotton is a big no-no when it comes to base layers as it soaks up moisture, making you even colder and very uncomfortable. The whole point of this layer is to keep moisture away from the skin, keeping you comfortable as well as allowing for your warm layers to do their job. Base layers also come in different thicknesses. The thinner ones will wick moisture but may be a bit cooler. The thicker ones also wick moisture, but will be a bit warmer. Picking between the two will be talked about in a bit. Now on to some of my favorite base layers. First up is the Under Armour Cold Gear Infrared Lightweight T-Shirt. I can suggest this one because I've been wearing it literally like as long as I can remember. And also anything that says Cold Gear from Under Armour is super good for cold weather. So look for that tag Cold Gear and you're all set to go. Next we've got two Patagonias. The first one is a quarter zip. This can be worn without a shirt underneath it, but I prefer to put like a light um, dry fit t-shirt under underneath it just for uh, it being comfortable. And this is going to keep you a little bit warmer than the Under Armour, um, just because it's going to be a little bit thicker, but it's still got really great performance. And then the second one is long underwear. Some people just wear pajamas underneath their snow pants, but I love wearing um, I love wearing long underwear. It's basically like really warm leggings, so it creates a lot of flexibility and uh, doesn't take any uh, range of action away, but it also uh, keeps you super warm. Second is your insulation layer. This is sometimes optional and sits against your base layer. Insulation layers are worn simply to keep you warm. They are often made out of or filled with natural fibers such as goose down or wool. Main priorities when shopping for this layer is weight, warmth, and packability. Weight is important to keep your overall range of motion. Lighter insulation layers will be thinner and more packable, but not always the warmest. Heavy layers are the opposite, not always the thinnest or easiest to be active in. This is where balance and price comes in. To decide this, you will first want to figure out what type of activity you're doing. More activity is going to require a lighter, thinner, and less warm layer. Warmth won't be a compromise though, because you'll be generating your own heat through your activity. If you were doing less activity, you'll be looking at exactly the opposite, a heavier and thicker layer to keep the small amount of heat you are generating in. Then finally, you have your in-between layer, which can get pricey. The ideal down layer will be warm enough to keep you warm in lesser activity, so like resting or sitting on the chairlift. But it'll also be light enough and thin enough to allow you to do activities such as hiking up the mountain or skiing back down it. Some of my favorite of these layers are the Heli Hansen Verglas Hybrid Insulator. It is very warm, but it's also very light and packable. Definitely would recommend it. Patagonia and North Face also make great ones. My sister wears the North Face, and my dad wears the Patagonia. They both love them. The third and outermost layer is the shell. This zips up over your other two layers. The purpose of a shell layer is to keep you dry and deflect the rain while still being breathable. The base layer and insulation layer will not keep snow, rain, or wind getting to your skin. So to fix this, you will need a shell. These are very thin, but will be made out of a more durable and scratchy texture. The best shells will have a fully waterproof build called a hard shell. Soft shells will not be waterproof, so watch out for that. And also highly breathable, allowing for your excess heat to be filtered out of your coat. My favorite shell right now 
is the Patagonia Untracked Jacket. This is the one I wear, and I can say it's got great storage. They fix any holes for you. Patagonia is a very reliable brand when it comes to that. And also, it's, it's got the best Gore-Tex it is, so it's going to be super breathable, but also fully waterproof. Also, you can get them used, which is what I did, for over half the price. Also, when looking for shells, a big thing to look out for is the title Gore-Tex or Event. These are going to offer the best performance. Again, like I said, the most breathability, but also the best waterproof performance. Gore-Tex can be very expensive, but from what I've seen is, it's highly worth it. Being able to have a breathable jacket so that you're not overheating on your jackets while still being fully waterproof and not having to worry about moisture getting to you is a great luxury to have. Now, with all that said, I'd like to put together some complete outfits for a hot day and a cold day that I myself would wear on the slopes. I am a snowboarder, but I do not believe this should differ much from a skier's outfit. So, here we go. First, I'll start with a cold day. So, here's what I wear. Burton snowboard specific socks. Under Armour Cold Gear Compression Pants or Long Underwear Under Armour Cold Gear Lightweight Shirt Paired with a Very Thin Patagonia Base Layer Quarter Zip Heli Hansen Insulator Jacket And then finally, the Patagonia Untracked Shell Jacket Then some little bits, a face mask, north face mittens, and then a helmet and goggles Next we will talk about a warmer day the worst thing to feel when snowboarding is being too hot and then sweating. Because when you take your jacket off to cool down, the moisture around your skin will absorb into your shirt and eventually become a freezing wet mess. So this outfit is to prevent that. We will stick with the same socks, same long underwear except it can be rolled up to your knees, dry fit Nike t-shirt as a great layer to fall back on, thick quarter zip, Patagonia, Under Armour, Heli Hansen, and North Face are all great brands. Then finally your shell. The dry fit t-shirt should wick any moisture while the thick quarter zip should allow for just the right amount of warmth. If you wanted to, you could also go with the dry fit t-shirt and the full insulator jacket if you have a backpack to put it in when conditions warm up. Okay, so thank you all for watching. I hope this helped you out and you can see all the gear I talked about in the description box below. Also, if you did enjoy, make sure to leave a like, subscribe, and click the notifications bell to be informed the next time we post.